Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. I'm going to teach you some very basic color theory for beginners. All Nature Sketch Trick step-by-step -step lessons come with easy color mixing formulas that are also demonstrated in the videos. I hope this color theory video helps you create more art. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about basic color theory. And this is all included in your Nature Sketch Create, create every month. And you can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook so you have it on hand. So you have your primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. So red, yellow, and blue. And if you mix these colors together, you'll get these colors in between, depending on the amount you use. So yellow and blue is gonna get a green, a blue green, or yellow green. The secondary color is the green color. And if you add more yellow, you're gonna get yellow green, which is a tertiary color. If you add more blue, you're gonna get more of a blue green, which again is a tertiary color. And that's the same with all of the colors here in the color wheel. I'll demonstrate that for you in just a moment. Then we have our complementary colors. So the complementary colors are the colors across from each other on the color wheel. So like orange and blue, red and green, violet and yellow. A good way to remember the complementary colors if you don't have your color wheel with you is that red and green are Christmas colors, blue and orange are like a blue tang and a clownfish, and violet and yellow are like Easter. The great thing about complementary colors is they can help you darken the colors without using black. And usually this results in a deeper, more vibrant color that's more pleasing to the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate some of these things for you. So I'm gonna start with the blue, cobalt blue. These are the watercolors I use for the Nature Sketch Create lessons because they make color mixing using a color formula very easy. They're also vibrant and beautiful. I'm gonna just put one drop of that blue there because it is very, very concentrated. Take a little bit of it. I'm adding a little bit of water with my water brush. I like the water brushes because you don't have to worry about dipping your brush into a vessel while you're painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint a little square of that to show you. And painting in anything with watercolor is a lot like using a crayon or a marker. Just go ahead and fill in a space you wanna fill in. So next I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to this. And we're gonna see this color start to change. One, two. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in a little square. And you can see it's turning a little bit more of a blue-green color. So we started with the blue, now we're getting to the blue-green by adding some yellow. So we're working our way towards the yellow on the color wheel by adding yellow to the blue. I'm going to add four drops this time just to accelerate the process a little bit. See that it's starting to look very green. That is six drops this time. And since we have a good amount of paint here now, I'm gonna take some of this to the side. I'm gonna move it over. And then I'm gonna add some yellow just to that. Because then I won't have to use quite as much. Adding about four drops.
And now you see that that's moving towards the yellow green. So you can see how it's making that progression. Gonna add some more. Add it a lot more. And I'm moving this color in my palette away from the previous color as well, so it's less blue and more yellow. And lots and lots of yellow. That's where that green is still bleeding in. but you can see it's getting more and more yellow. I think that's a good place to stop that progression from blue to more of a yellow color. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the complementary colors to darken your color. So say you have a bit of red, and a little bit of green. And we'll start with a little bit of red and add it here. I'm cleaning off my brush before I add it to that green. Get a little bit of green and add it into the red. And you can see how immediately that darkens it up. Dab it on my towel and see that darker color there. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more green and add it in. See it continues to darken the color. I'm going on the brown side. And now I'm just gonna add all of that in together. darkening that up even more. Cleaning off my brush, and alternatively, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you add black to darken a color. So again, we'll take some of the same red. And some carbon black. Again, same red. Pick up a little bit of that black and add it in. Maybe I went a little too heavy handed that first time. It's always good to move slowly with watercolors, adding colors and mixing and even painting with them. I think that's gonna be about the same. Add quite a bit more. So it's looking very black. Definitely muted that red. You get a very different effect when you use black versus the complementary color. Now I'd like to demonstrate for you what it looks like when you add brown. So again, we're gonna start with the red. And I'm gonna demonstrate this using burnt umber. Take a little bit and add it in. Take a little bit more and add it in. And then a lot more. 
haven't added all of it, but most of it. Sort of a gradual darkening. I'm gonna add all of it. And this is a reddish brown, so it's still staying a little bit on the reddish side. So I might need to add a few more drops to really bring it to the darkness that we're looking for. I might need to add a whole bunch more. Color mixing is always an adventure here. That's why with all the Nature Sketch Create lessons, you get all of the color mixing formulas to help you. It's getting on the browner side, but it's not. Add all that together. So definitely going very brown. So three very different effects. And as this dries, you can see the effects just a little bit clearer as to what happens when you're trying to get a darker color. So it starts getting a little more green. This really just blocks that red a lot. And then this one just gets a little bit darker. Because it's a reddish brown, it doesn't get super dark. So let's try a dark brown, the sepia with the red. Again, just creating a little box of red so you know that's where we started. Take a little bit of that sepia and add it in. immediately getting a lot darker because it's not a reddish brown. Take a little bit of that, add it in again. Kind of a blackish brown. So I'm getting more of an effect like the black because it's a blackish brown rather than a reddish brown. But when it dries, I think we're gonna find something a little closer to the complementary color as well. And then a little bit more. So that blackish brown, the sepia is behaving much more like the black. So if you can get different effects depending on what kind of color you're using. Lastly, I'm gonna show you what happens when you add some white. important to know. So take some red and then I'm also going to show what it looks like when you add lots and lots of water to it in the palette. I'm going to go ahead and put that color over here so you can compare this to when you add a lot of white to it. So the two colors here. And now I'm gonna add some white. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit. Not much of a change. Take some more. Just a tiny bit of a change. Clean off my brush, make sure I get, kinda of need a lot of white to get a change. starting to get lighter. Let's go ahead and mix all of this in. We're a little bit lighter. Just adding a bunch of white. Speed up the process a little bit. There's not 
not a whole lot of change there. Bunch of white in. See, we're getting closer to this color it's just a little bit more opaque so if you're looking for a light pinkish color you can do it without white you're gonna get a transparent white color if you do it with just water whereas you're gonna get it more of a color an opaque color so you can't see behind it as much so it's not going to show anything all the colors behind it if you had something behind it so this is going to be more of a transparent this is going to be more of an opaque. But more or less you can get to the same color. Just depends on what kind of effect you're looking for in your painting. As always with the Nature Sketch Create lessons, you don't have to worry about color mixing. All the color formulas are there for you. So I hope you enjoyed the basic color theory demonstration and are able to apply it when you go out to paint. And in the meantime, I hope you're starting to learn and understand color mixing from the color mixing formulas, taking away that anxiety that might be behind trying to get the right color for your painting. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out naturesketchcrate.com for future lesson crates.